Want your prototypes to replicate real user experiences? Implementing scrolling can transform static designs into dynamic, user-friendly experiences. In Figma, scroll position defines how individual objects behave when you scroll past them. There are three types of scroll positions. Scroll with parent, where objects move up and down with the parent frame as you scroll. Fixed, where objects don't move at all. And sticky, where objects start as scrolling within the parent frame, but become fixed once the top edge of the object reaches the top of its parent frame. In this tutorial, we'll focus on sticky scroll and see how we can use it to make our prototypes even more dynamic. To learn more about other scroll behaviors and how to use them in Figma, check out our other resources linked in the video description. Here is a design of a blog. On either side of the main article content, we've included a few callouts that provide extra information on the blog topic. To apply scrolling to a top-level frame, it needs to have content that extends beyond the frame. Select the top-level frame, then switch to the Prototype tab. We want to scroll up and down the page, so we'll select Vertical from the Overflow drop-down menu. Now that we've set the scroll overflow for the top-level frame, we need to think about how we want each layer within the frame to act when we scroll past it. By default, all of our layers are set to scroll with parent, so when we scroll through the prototype, they all scroll up and out of the frame. However, we want the callouts to stick to the top of the frame. That way, the information stays with the reader as they scroll through each section of the article. To apply sticky scroll to the callouts, select the callouts from the Layers panel by holding Shift, then switch to the Prototype tab. In the Scroll Behavior section, open the Position drop-down menu and select Sticky. Let's preview our prototype with Inline Preview. Hmm, it looks like the first two callouts stuck to the top of the frame as we expected, but the third callout scrolled behind the first callout. We want it to scroll in front of the first callout so that the most recent callout stays visible. We can fix this by changing the order of the layers. The order of objects in the Layers panel determines the stacking order of overlapping objects. From the Layers panel, we can see that the first callout, callout 1, is located above our other layers. If we move the other callouts above the first one, they should now stack on top of the first callout. And now it's working great! We've gotten our callouts to stick to the top of our blog page, but wouldn't it be nice to have a little extra breathing room at the top of the frame? Right now, the callouts are sticking to the very top edge of the parent frame. We want to add a bit of padding above the callouts, so that there's a bit of space between the top of the parent frame and the callout. In Sticky Scroll, objects become fixed once the top edge of the object reaches the top edge of the parent frame. We need to extend the top edge of the callout so that there's more space above where the text content begins. To do this, let's wrap the callout in a new frame. Select Callout 1, right-click and select Frame Selection from the menu. Now the callout is wrapped in a new frame, which we'll rename to Sticky Offset. We want to extend the size of the Sticky Offset frame and place the callout content to the bottom of that frame. With the Sticky Offset frame selected, click and drag its top bounding box to change its height. Then, select the callout layer, and in the right sidebar, click Align Bottom to align the layer to the bottom of its parent frame. Since the Sticky Offset frame is now a parent frame for our text, we'll go back to the Prototype tab to adjust the scroll behavior. We can set the Sticky Offset frame to Sticky and set the Callout 1 layer back to Scroll with Parent. Let's preview it again. Now, the top of the sticky offset frame is what sticks to the top of the page, so we can see a gap between the callout and the top edge of the blog page. Let's apply the same technique to the two other callouts. We're almost there, but there's still one more thing we can do to improve our prototype. Right now, all of the callouts stay on the page. Ideally, we'd love for them to completely scroll out of view once we scroll past the blog section they're related to. That way, users will only see callouts that are relevant to what they're reading. To do this, we can use one more frame to create the boundaries of where and how far a sticky scroll applies. 
With sticky scroll, objects always stay within their direct parent's bounds. Right now, the sticky offset parent frame is the entire length of the blog post. But if we add one more frame to our callouts, we can decide where the sticky scroll ends. Select the sticky offset frame. Right click and select frame selection from the menu to wrap our content in another frame. Rename the new frame to sticky constraint. Then click and drag the bottom bounding box of the sticky constraint frame to extend its height. We want this callout to scroll out of view once it reaches the image. So we'll snap the height of the frame to the last line of this paragraph. Now, once this new frame is scrolled out of view, the sticky frame within it should follow. Let's check again with inline preview. And it works. We can apply the same idea to our two other callouts. Wrap them in a new frame, then extend the bottom length of each new frame. Everything looks great. Now, users who play this prototype have a more dynamic experience and can read relevant callouts as they scroll through the blog. Plus, we've learned how to use sticky scroll in prototypes, why layer order is important, and how to use padding and parent frames to manipulate the way our objects stick on the page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more Figma tutorials.